Okay. So our next talk, next talk we're moving from uh, structure prediction to subcellular localization prediction. Yes. So first of all, thank you for sticking around. My name is Chao Yan from the University of Montreal. Uh, the subject I'm talking about today is about this fascinating mechanism of primary subcellular localization about building machine learning tool to predict its localization outcome. To give you an overall idea, our localization mechanism is one of the most important yet underappreciated facets of the gene, uh, gene regulation and scavage health is a regulation of gene expression and cellular organization of the proteins via transport and the RNA transcript to where their function or uh, uh, structure or transcript proteins are needed. Maybe the best to ask ourselves why we should pay attention to this uh, mechanism before we go anywhere deeper. For one thing, it's known that the localization of MRAs accounts in part for the, for the major symmetry observed in the protein distribution, since localizing the MRA is a far more efficient energy preserve option than transporting its uh, multiple protein copies. And uh, it's also known that uh, uh, it can prevent the uh, tra uh, translation and size uh, where its function will be better served. And, uh, and it could also be better understood from its negative effects we did uh, possibly go around, such as uh, Alzheimer's disease uh, due to the excessive localization of ATI4 protein coding genes to the nucleus uh, fraction of cells. Once an, uh, so as shown in this picture on the left, once uh, the mRNA is transcribed in the nucleus, it may be exported to the cytoplasm, it's not retained by the nucleus, may be further transported to the, uh, to the cytosolic uh, section in the cell, such as to the periphery of, of, of certain organelles, such as the uh, mitochondria or gorgi, or even excreted beyond the boundary of the cell. I found intertwin in the protocol board that can be used to describe the RNA substance trafficking for the stochastic and that, uh, and, uh, the, and uh, dynamic interaction between the trans, trans, uh, trans, uh, trans, uh, trans, the trans regulatory factor, the diverse population of RNA binding proteins, and the six acting elements, uh, uh, zip code element the sequences that usually ranges between 20 and 200 nucleotides. And it is, and it, and, and it has been a well-known fact that the RNA secondary structure and, and have a certain impact on the RNA protein interactions. Uh, therefore. Uh, this effect should be also taken into account in the context of uh, localized RNAs. And usually people assume that the, the, uh, the uh, zip code element usually reside in the three prime UTR fractions of the RNA transcript, but uh, there could be also be abundant RNA RBP binding site and uh, zip code elements in the protein coding part of the transcript. So, how exactly are RNAs localized? This remains an active field of study, but there are three well-characterized pathways. The first one involves interaction between the RNAs and the motor, and the motor proteins that would, uh, maneuver, that would uh, maneuver them in the subcellular space, such as along the cytoskeleton, and, uh, another, local, and another localization pathway through diffusion, which is similar in that uh, uh, usually less motor proteins are involved and uh, except for the RBP proteins that need to uh, capture the RNAs where they're uh, distributed to their, uh, to, their, 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 uh, to their vicinity. And also another pathway is to protect MRAs uh, from being degraded as that's where they, can, they may have a chance of being translated. So our objective in this study is to predict the RNA localization is only based on the RNA sequences and it's in first secondary structure. This will be achieved using a new deep learning approach related to the ones uh, previously introduced in the study such as uh, predicting RNA protein interactions, inferring dairy function, and protein localizations. And uh, we're not only uh, care about uh, fitting the data set as much as possible, but we're also interested in the inference state and for that way, Proposed to recover the RBP binding signal from the sequence and to identify that the, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the, the zip code element in the sequences. The two data sets we use in the study are both sequencing based. The first one, the calciferistic, uh, cal cal is a fractionation based measure that combines biomedical fractionation and high throughput learning sequencing to map the transcriptome to number of subcellular compartments that are the nucleus, uh, that are the insoluble, uh, such as the Gorgi and mitochondria, 
and the membrane and the nucleus. Uh, the found by our sequencing, we can obtain the enrichment value of the RNA transcriptome maps to those for some reflections. Another one is uh, based on uh, protein biotinylation and RNA crosslinking can called apex rip, uh, which is uh, I, I, which is to identify the RNAs co localized with biotinylated proteins and found by RNA immune, uh, RNA immune uh, precipitation and pull down. They can also sequence RNA. Uh, co, co localized with biotin uh, with biotinylated proteins to them to another set of four cell refractions and nucleus, but also on the plasmic reticulum and mitochondria. So each of these approaches estimates the expression uh, 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 expression level of each transcript each fraction expressed in terms of IPKM. We simply normalize the data across fraction to obtain free transcript and localization vector times one which is approximately the proportion of a given uh, population of transcript that finds its way to each, to each fraction. Because this merger is unreliable for only expressed genes, we only keep genes that uh, with, with uh, an average expression level above a certain threshold empirically determined at one that has, a good, uh, that has a good performance. And also, since the sequences are of different lengths, we can either cap and pad the sequences to a fixed length that has four thousand nucleotide, which is a good uh, trade-off between the training efficiency and loss of formation, or we can train with a multi data high without losing any without losing any information, but certainly hurt the perform uh, hurt the training efficiency. So this is our overall architecture of our uh, neural architecture model with the current tracker. It uses as input behind coding for the nucleotides. Uh, and optionally, the input can be augmented by the predicted RNA secondary structure. So the convolution operation has been proven very useful in a number of, uh, in a number of previous study on RNA uh, protein interactions where they can recover uh, meaningful RNA binding proteins and uh, motifs and uh, the method would outperform traditional method based on uh, scanning the transcript using a position based matrices. Also, we used uh, bidirectional STM type of recurrent neural net. We hope to, in, to investigate the long range dependencies of the RBP uh, binding signals in the sequences. Also, we have a tension module at the end. Uh, given the length of the data, we need a uh, merger to effectively aggregate the information, the information along the length axis of the, date, uh, of the data. And we use a loss function, the KL divergence also in this in, uh, in our scenario, it, it's very comparable to the usual cross entropy loss function used in a uh, standard classification task, except for the labels are not are replaced with, uh, with probabilities for each class, uh, the distribution ratios. So our attention module is actually motivated from self-attention, because in from the first formula, where two feature vectors from uh, each uh, where the feature vectors from a time step, it's, it compared to, to the other time step to, them, to determine the relevance of uh, the information coded there. The additive style of comparing two feature vectors usually begins with the concatenation of these two feature vectors transform by learnable weight matrices, W, and the nonlinearity function then. Uh, finally, followed by a dot product, you can get a score for the relevance of those two feature vectors, HS and HT, but what we we want to do here is not to compare a pair of feature vector, but to uh, associate a score of a vector for a single feature vector. And uh, for the purpose, if you uh, say that if you take out the nonlinearity, the alpha HSST actually would reduce to a much similar form where the alpha only depends on H, uh, uh, H uh, T, uh, no H T, because the uh, HS would read, uh, would, uh, Cancel out in this uh, di uh, in the, in this division up and above. So here are the results we obtained on the super thick data sets, training with full-length sequences and with old models shown previously. Each point indicates a text sample from one of the tenfold of the cross validation. In particular, we use the Pearson correlation coefficient to indicate the uh, uh, the quality of prediction between the true localization value and the predicted values. And uh, you can see that it has a very good performance for the set of song fraction and perhaps ensemble depending on your definition of the good performance, but uh, uh, it certainly has a very bad performance at the new kids. Our explanation is, uh, can be taken from a, uh, from a recent paper that uh, uh, genes that are 
uh, less sufficiently spliced tends, uh, are associated with uh, more mucus retention, which is, which, is, uh, which is particularly true for the long non-collinear fractions. And uh, the fact of uh, less sufficiently uh, uh, spliced would lead to more <laughs> isoforms. And they were we're only associating each gene example to its uh, uh, longest uh, transcript, transcript isoform. So that may, be, that may be the reason why we don't have a good performance at the nucleus fraction. That means uh, uh, the, the additional isoforms and uh, their relative compensation would have additional signal that could, be, could improve the predictive pipeline. So with also tied to several variants of a model as well as uh, the baseline predictor. This led to several observations. The first, the uh, RNA tracker first and outperforms two five more based uh, uh, baseline models. And second, trained with fingerline sequences certainly is more preferable <laughs> to training with uh, fingerline sequences capital padded to the four thousand nucleotide, although the training time is much longer. Third, the STM and transition module each provide a substantial improvement. On the other hand, we are not able to uh, observe any uh, additional benefits by incorporating the inferred secondary structures. Actually, we computed the secondary structure using our RPL fold with a scanning window of 100 and would uh, base pair as many possible uh, within each scanning window uh, gradingly without nesting or creating pseudo nodes. Um, so in the previous scary plots, the performance shown in a regression style, but here we would like to compare the performance from a classification perspective, simply by converting the ground truth uh, localization values to labels by, by associating each example to a single subset fraction uh, with the highest localization value. And our observation is uh, pretty consistent uh, with what we have from the scary plots. Okay. So far, we have shown that our tracker succeeds at uh, predicting localization to, to a good extent, but we also care about the inference state, which is about identifying the factor that the model has learned to, to associate with uh, uh, localization prediction. In other words, which, which region of a given transcript contributes the most to the predicted uh, localization pattern? For this case, we develop a sim simple sliding uh, mask and approach. We record this uh, cloud divergence for, uh, so we will slide uh, this window along the three prime UTR fraction of the transcript and for each mask mental position, we would compute a new prediction and the cloud divergence is computed between the original prediction and the new prediction where the mask window is applied. We apply the mask window to a contiguous uh, proportion of nucleotides of 100 and we would move uh, that mask window with a spread of one along the three prime UTR from the five prime, uh, from the beginning of the three prime to the end. We record this uh, cloud divergence for every position of the mass to obtain profile, shown this one. Peaks in that profile are, are uh, likely zip code elements. There are actually too few experimentally verified zip code sequences to directly evaluate the accuracy of our prediction. However, we can obtain indirect validation by considering the fact that the most zip code elements are likely to be under selection. And uh, that's we use the Final P score downloaded from the user student browser, and we have reached the uh, final P score within each mass window. And uh, you can see that when the final P score is well aligned with the KL score, that has a strong that uh, has a strong implication for the nature of the peaks that might be zip code, that might be be the zip code elements. And we observe a uh, uh, statistically significant shift in the distribution with a near two fold increase in high final P scores among zip codes compared to the background of compared to those of the background as three prime UTRs. And this suggests that regions predicted as zip codes by iron tracker off under strong girth and active pressure. And they're strong that they are more likely to be functional, to be the zip codes. Okay. So obviously there are certainly more that uh, could be done for thing, more accurate secondary structures needed to decode long range based pairing as well as the local information and actually some uh, uh, some uh, some bring in to ha 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 has been identifying this uh, conference that can accommodate the the very long nucleotide sequences uh, nature of the MRI uh, transcripts and uh, even if it's with with accurate estimation of the of the of the secondary structure to fully exploit their uh, graphical properties one would would uh, 
to more effectively learn their uh, re uh, their, uh, re their representation, perhaps using graph neural networks, and uh, need, we also need to incorporate other other form uh, other other form of information to the predictive uh, pipeline, as 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 identified in a, in a recent paper, Zuckerman et al. That uh, this this mass efficiency is a major indicator for new case retention, uh, such as mass transport, uh, such as plasmic export. So. Exposing the model to all possible variants of the isoform and their relative uh, and their relative composition would uh, uh, very possibly improve its uh, predictive accuracy in many of the fraction, in particular the nucleus fraction of the cell. Also, there is a, a more decent way to identify the physical elements, such as uh, using activation maximization or integrated uh, gra uh, gradient approach or just simply to draw, draw a heat map than uh, then, uh, moving around the, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the mask window along the stream primary TR fraction, which is time costly. Also, uh, it would be interesting to, uh, to, 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 uh, to, identify, uh, to, identify, to, to identify mutation that would affect this uh, uh, RNA localization most drastically. Uh, so yeah, I would like to thank my supervisor, Mr. Blanchard, and my colleague, uh, uh, colleague Fezzi. I also like to thank Dr. Nikia and his students, uh, Luis uh, uh, Bernard Bouvret, also uh, Dr. Bangladeshi and his two students, Roman Carlos, also the founders from the Quebec. Okay, so that's all. So I wondered, I mean, ultimately you would like to know what the specific features are that drive that localization. So have you tried to maybe narrow that window, make that smaller, that sliding window, so that you might get at individual elements? Or could you already now see, after filtering for conservation, what more specific local features might be behind that? And maybe that even fits with the apex experiments, which proteins they use there and so forth? Uh, there's another question. So, so the first one as to the lens of the mask window, uh, due to our hypothesis of the lens of the zip code element, which may range between 20 and 200 nucleotides, it seems that you use a very short mass window would not be interesting. So we actually tried using a mass window of 200, but our result is uh, best obtained using a mass window of, of 100. And as to the difference between surface and apex strip, they're using different protocols, so it's hard to tell which one of them is more accurate, although they're using exactly the same sequence, the obvious, the Longest isoform transcript. Um, as for the feature, we had uh, visualized some of the multi learned by the first convolution filter, but I didn't have it in, in the slides, it's in the, in the paper. <laughs>